New things are happening, we cannot continue building our sites like we used to and there are niches to stay away from and new niches you should definitely go into today. So if you already have a site, the tips I have in this video can also be implemented on that site. And I'm also going to share some of the niches, or actually most of the niches that I work on and that I go after right now today. And before we continue, I have a huge fat disclaimer. I'm not telling you with this video to just go after the most lucrative niches out there. I would definitely go after your passion First, because I've seen so many bloggers burn out or just move from niche to niche because they were not really passionate about it. But that said, you also need to understand what goes into a high earning niche and why some niches just do much better than others. We are very much going after product related topics and articles where you're talking about services and such. And we're coming back to how we can avoid turning your articles into YMYL because then you'll probably not have a chance in Google. Now let's try and turn this into niches, like actual domain names. And let's start with a really good one, something like Hiking Pro. Because if you want to talk about hiking, there's definitely a lot of gear and a lot of products. And it's what you can call middle class or what I like to call upper middle class. I sort of hate that term, but in this regard, it makes sense to look at something that a lot of people are into and where they are able to spend some money in order to get into this. Because if you want to buy hiking boots and all the gear that comes into hiking, you would need to spend some money down the line. So you might also think now that just going after the most expensive products and hobbies or lifestyle stuff with very expensive products would be the best way to go. And that's definitely not the case because if you were to build a site like superyachts.com, you would just have a way too small audience. But there's another problem here because let's consider the demographic searching something like the most expensive yacht. If you were actually to buy a yacht, you would probably Google something like how to find a yacht within this size or how long does it last or what's the longevity and something like that. But if you're just looking for the most expensive one or let's consider another topic, something like what's the biggest piece of gold in the world? Of course, this is an expensive product and also the biggest yacht is definitely expensive. But the demographics here is off because this will not be searched by somebody actually looking to purchase a yacht or something like that. It will probably be searched by middle school kids or smaller kids just fascinated by the amount of money you need to pour into such a yacht. And remember, if you're targeting kids, then even though if you're talking about yachts or gold or necklaces or whatever, diamonds or whatever, then you will not have great earnings with ads. So you really need to consider the intent and the demographic behind the search and not just write about anything and everything that's expensive. Really thinking about the search intent, like why are people looking for this and who would be looking for this? Try to understand the demographics and the intention behind the search is very, very important because otherwise you can easily get fooled and you'll think that you are in a golden niche where you're really targeting kids or somebody who will just stay on your side for 10 seconds. Now let's talk about niches that used to be really, really great. If you were in the product review niche, if you wanted to build a site around product reviews, product listings, or really just helping people to find the best product. That's not the best case for a site today. It's typically not the best niche because if you really build your site around that and specifically the domain name, let's say it's something like camera gear or reviews.com, then you have already targeted the majority of the content to be around reviews. And the good old school, 100% pure affiliate sites where every article there is a review or a comparison or the best X for Y, that's just not a good way to go anymore. Google has been very specific about that during the last year. In July, they came out with the Google spam update. I have a video here where I show you how my sites were affected and where I show you a lot of insights one month after it was rolled out. If you haven't watched that, you need to watch that. And one of the key takeaways here for us as bloggers is sort of summed up in this quote here from Google. They put it like this. Affiliate program content should only form a minor part of the content of your site if the content adds no additional features. So unless you plan to go out and spend a lot of money on a ton of camera gear or office gear or whatever your niche is about, 
then you will probably not do a very good job with the site just about reviews. Take a site like the wire cutter. It's often used by affiliate marketers because it's such a great example. It's owned today by the New York Times. And the reason why they can get away with this or they could get away with this is for one, they did this a couple of years ago and now it's implemented on this massive site, the New York Times. And the second thing is that they actually purchased the items. So if you want to compare five different cameras, imagine you need to purchase all these cameras. It's a huge expense and something that 99% of us is not able to do because the cost of creating such a site is just humongous. And it'll be a long time before we see any returns on that. So how then should we design the content strategy for our sites? I would say today, if you look three, five years out in the future, I would definitely build a site with a majority of content that's informational, but it can definitely still be about products that we looked at previously. I showed you the data from Mesoic from my sites. You can still target questions people have around products, but maybe you shouldn't rely on reviews that much. And then you'll probably monetize your site something like 80, 20, 80% with ads and 20% with affiliate offers. If we look three, five years out in the future, that's what I see, that's what I think will be happening. But I also wanna say that it's still completely fine to write a review or compare products. It's not like you cannot do it, especially if these topics are underserved. If you can actually find something that people didn't review before, or they did a very poor job about it, or nobody compared the product to this other product, then you can still go for it. If it's an underserved topic, regardless of what type of topic, you can definitely still go for it. But I wouldn't create a site that's like 80% reviews, even though you find this magic niche that I don't think exists anymore where nobody wrote the majority of the reviews or reviewed the majority of the products there. People also ask me if you can put the affiliate links on the site from the start, or if you have to wait, let's say a couple of months until you have some traffic or traction in Google before you put the affiliate links in the articles, you can definitely put the links in from the start. You don't have to wait till you see X or Y amount of traffic. Just put them in there and make some commissions as soon as it ranks. Now let's talk a bit about YMYL. We touched a little bit on this before. So it's about financial topics and health related topics and politics and a lot of things where people have strong opinions also. I don't think we have any new categories added to this pool of YMYL niches to stay away from. So you can check this other video to see which niches you should probably stay away from unless you have a lot of authority and you are already an established uh, figure in that space or you have credentials and you have a doctor's degree or whatever. But I think something new here is still happening because I see some articles that used to rank for my sites that don't rank so well anymore. And it's not because Google included new categories in the YMYL space, as I said, it's more because I think they got smarter. So I think Google is just getting better also at understanding when an article or a topic is actually health related. Let's take an example like this one here. Can yachts cross the Pacific and Atlantic oceans? So it's an article I've been ranking for for quite some time, but actually over this summer, it doesn't rank so well anymore. And I think it's just because Google now realized that this is very much health related. Because let's say I were to give bad advice in this article and I send people out in the middle of the Atlantic in a small sailboat, that wouldn't be so good, right? That would definitely cause some potential risk to their health. So you'll probably see some articles losing traffic just like I have, just because Google got smarter and now they understand the potential health risk or financial risk involved with the topic that they didn't realize before. Now let's look at a few articles or a few topics that I would not think is YMYL and some that are because it's a borderline here when we're talking about helping people find the best products. Let's start by looking at a few examples that I think are great. Also because I rank for something very similar to this across my sites. It could be something like great cameras under $500. Let's say nobody else did this segmentation, then you could definitely rank for it with a brand new site, even though it's somehow a financial advice, but it's not all the way into YMYL land here. The next one here, how much do small sailboats cost? 
So it's also sort of a financial advice, but it's probably not something that will totally ruin their economy because you know, if you say they're too cheap and they are not, it's not like they're gonna pay more money for it or something like that. Another example here, five tips on how to sell your RV. So again, I think this is great. It's something that I can rank for with a brand new site. Now let's take a few examples that you will probably need to stay away from because then we are going into YMYL space. Something like how to finance a boat because that's more financial advice. It's exactly showing them how to finance it, how to get the insurance and something like that. Or how to save money while living on a boat. I tried that and that article just didn't rank. So again, it's money saving advice first and then this whole boat aspect is probably secondary here. I hope these examples clarify a little bit when you are crossing the line there. If you like these updates and you want to know more about my sites and my strategies, subscribe here and give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time.